Standard & Poor's has just published its third annual report on corporate green bonds. Today I'm speaking with Michael Wilkins, who's Head of Research for Environmental and Climate Risk at S&P in London. Welcome, Mike. Thanks, Tara. So tell us, what does this report say about the corporate green bond market at the moment? Well, this report eff effectively talks about the evolution of the corporate green bond market, which has been uh, quite phenomenal over the past few years. Uh, last year, we saw the corporate green segment uh, grow to 22% of the total uh, in terms of issuance uh, in total green bonds um, amongst all different entities. And that was uh, reflecting several large uh, benchmark issues, such as one by Apple, uh, which actually came out this year in, in 2016. But nevertheless, last year we saw several big utilities uh, issue uh, multi-billion uh, dollar issuances. So what we're saying effectively is that uh, the corporate green bond market is uh, continuing to grow. Uh, this year we're expecting it to grow up to potentially 30 uh, billion dollars worth of issuance, uh, between 15 and 30, depending really on what happens in China. Um, we're expecting to see some specific uh, guidance for the corporate sector in China come out from the People's Bank, uh, which will actually spur on growth, we believe. Okay. So one of the other interesting things you talk about in the report is pricing and yeah. how that is impacted by um, by green bonds. What yeah. can you can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, so so far in the in the green bond market for corporates, we haven't seen much of a differential in pricing between green bonds and non-green bonds. Perhaps a couple of basis points at the point of origination in Europe, but not so much in the U.S. So um, and is that to save? Is, is that saving investors money? Or it, exactly, it's, it's, okay. it's, sa it's actually saving uh, money for for the issuers. The issuers, okay. Exactly. So, but uh, what we expect to see going forward is is a, a much bigger connection between the green credentials of of, uh, of, uh, of green bonds and the pricing. And if we if we look at the issue related to to disclosure. Uh, emission reduction initiatives uh, by corporations have increased dramatically from, you know, as you see on this chart here, below 50% in 2010 to over uh, or just under 90% in 2015. Uh, and that shows that corporations are actually doing a lot more to improve their environmental credentials, which means they need to fund that so that they will be issuing more as a result of that. And, uh, you know, the pricing is going to reflect that too. There will be a, an increased demand because investors need to meet commitments set out in the Paris Climate Change Agreement and other pledges, and so that's going to drive the pricing as well. So, is there anything else that needs to happen to get us to that point where it, you know it is directly linked to to to, the, to that? Well, what one one key issue is when you're going to start seeing green bonds uh, and their pricing reflect uh, green quality in the same way that bonds reflect credit quality. So the credit spread will. Uh, will um, tighten because of uh, improved credit quality, where you see the, cr uh, the green spread on bonds also mm. tighten because of improved environmental credentials. And, and this goes down really to, to disclosure in many respects. If you see on this chart, uh, the number of companies disclosing the, um, the uh, after their bond is issued has increased and we're starting to see uh, uh, more and more companies after the first year of issuance actually continue to show where the proceeds of that bond is going to. And investors are very focused on this. They want to know not just where the proceeds go to, but what the assets themselves are actually doing to benefit the transition to a low carbon economy. And that really is going to have an impact, uh, we believe, on pricing because investors will want to pay more uh, for a, a greener bond uh, over time than they will do for a non-green bond. And that's because ultimately we believe that credit quality and green quality will be interlinked. Okay, so we'll see where we are on that in a year's time. Thank okay. you. Thanks so much. That concludes this edition of Credit Matters TV. For this report, as well as all of our other uh, research, you can go to www.spratings.com. Thanks for watching.